This is going to be your guide to the Pokepelago and Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now, the layout is a little switched up right now because it is mostly done in the bottom screen. And really, the biggest thing I have to say about the Pokepelago is that if you have not started it, you start this thing right now because your life is now beans. It's beans for now. It's beans forever. You are beans. Everything you know and love is now beans. Beans, beans. You shake this tree, you get some beans. You need to stop out beans or else you can't bean. That is literally how the Pokebellago works. So there's a lot of there's a lot of min-maxing in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and the Pokebellago is going to be a pretty big feature of it. That daily you can shake the tree and get a varying amount of beans. So well, actually, I think there's like just set amount, but depending on what time you tap it during the day, you'll get like different amounts of beans and stuff. You can also check out the Pokemon from your PC boxes, and you can even find new Pokemon to join your party. So I need to make sure I shake every last bean out of this tree. There we go, because this. This is this is your life now is beans so the idea is that in your story catch every Pokemon that you have the opportunity to load up on quick balls just try to get as many Pokemon as possible because it'll fill up your Pokepelago a lot sooner now in the first one we're in Isle of Beans <sighs> see your life is beans now guys and you can click on a random Pokemon and hey look at this this is not mine I did not catch this guy it's just a wild Pokemon that wandered on over and decided that it might like the place so it can come over and join my party potentially and then we can hop on over to Serebii to get the full information as to what is going on with the Pokepelago and all the Pokemon that can appear. So as you can see, it's a lot of different Pokemon that you can find on your adventures, but maybe in their evolved forms, like the Drifblim, Miss Magius, or even the Matang. So you can get some rare Pokemon this way. The Trevenant works out, the Carbing. Other otherwise, Pokemon you might not have even encountered in your adventure might just pop up into your Pokemon Isle and be like, hey, I like this place. Let's go have some fun. Now, it does depend on what state you are in your game that the rarity is based off of where you are. So from when you first access Pokepelago to where you go to Ula Ula Island, Pony Island, and then from the Elite Four, changes the odds and likeliness of a Pokemon appearing that, as you can see, it goes from Poliwag never, very likely, likely, and then likely. Also some Pokemon just staying not likely no matter what you do. And that's just kind of one of the first things about it. So this is why it's like, yo, berries, or beans, not berries, beans, Make sure you beans hit that tree. Make sure you get every single bean at every time. There's no time to waste beans because also there's a little basket here. And then what you can do is you can put beans in the basket. And when you do that, you can actually cause other effects to happen. So on certain islands, you get certain effects. In this one, it increases the chance of Pokemon coming and staying because they like the beans and they think it's a pretty cool place like that. On that, we also have some other isles to talk about. So we have Isle of Plenty. This is going to be a berry farm. Now there is the berry farm on Route 2 as well, but right here, you can pretty much just get some AFK berries and also increase the yield. So I already harvested these berries right here, but you can see I have a citrus berry growing here. And that is one of the interesting things about how the berries work is that what you can do is that you can go and you can drop in beans right here and what the beans will do is increase your yield and not necessarily the time but some of the time these berries take to grow is pretty high so you have 24 hours on basic beans 48 hours on the more advanced beans and then the rarest beans will take 72 hours three days so pretty much you slap in a ton of beans and then you just kind of AFK it and hope that your beans grow, which is why developing this aisle in full is somewhat recommended that if you really want berry farming, that if you're going for like non-stop berries and you want to make sure you have all the rare berries and all of like the EV reducing berries, so I think that's going to be a big one. That if you, like as you can see, I have a Kelpsy berry growing, I also have some tomato berries growing. So that's going to help it to where if I need to reset EVs when it comes to when I'm training my Pokemon or if I want to kind of balance around some EVs on other Pokemon as well. So that's going to be a big one. And then next up, we have Isle of Fun. It's the coal mines and yet it's called Fun. So coal mines are pretty interesting. You can actually go and find different items. And I've done this for three days on the rare treasure hunting. I have not once received a gold bottle cap. So the rarity of the items in here is still pretty crazy and there are a lot of breakdowns but this is where all my berries are going because the effect of the berries means that they will come back faster so every minute that goes by the explorers will return in half that time so it was 24 hours if you max out with beans then it will drop down to 12 hours which means you could realistically get two runs per day and not have to change up your sleep schedule just so that you have to go and farm up some like bottle caps and stuff like that 
Uh, as you can see, the Poke Bean effect is in effect for 16 hours. So I'll be able to have some decent time to refresh as well. So I'm just keeping up with this. But yeah, for every minute that passes, two minutes will be subtracted. So that's pretty much that. You can send them out by just tapping on this. So, oh, I can also call my Pokemon back from the current expedition. I didn't know about that. I don't know. Will they actually find something if it comes out to be early? So we'll call them back. And as we can see, there's there's really nothing going on. See, my, my Pokemon did not discover any treasures in that. So I'll send them back on that path. Except I sent them on the wrong path. Because there are different paths that you can go and explore to. So we have the path for odd shard hunting. The odd shard path pretty much is just going to be shards and some other smaller items right here. So shards in the festival plaza can be exchanged for silver bottle caps so the regular bottle caps improve one iv to maximum but the thing is you need 30 shards which is actually a pretty insane number and the problem is that you can only get like two or three shards i did this for a couple days as well and i got two blue shards three green shards two red one yellow or something like that and you need 30 of the same color so it might if you are doing like mad grinding and you're doing only shards you might be able to get two bottle caps to three bottle caps per week doing this method and just go be silver so that won't even be enough to max out one pokemon and then that's why i'm doing the path for rare treasure hunting rare treasure i'm doing this over the interesting item hunting because i just want to lock down these items i want the best chance of getting the golden bottle caps for the hyper training even though you can see interesting item hunting this includes everything that interesting item hunting can give you evolutionary stones such as the ice stone and the moonstone and the sunstone and all of these other rare stones so if you really need pokemon to be evolving and if you want items like the light clay or the everstone that's gonna be pretty good so this is for like pokemon evolution and getting com competitive pokemon as well so you can kind of mix and match do what you need to do with these and then maybe you will be rewarded and now we're starting to get into some heavy stuff we have isle evil up and then we also have isle of view and now you can see why beans are your life. Beans to the Poke Beans. Beans, beans. You need a lot of beans because it's going to take 240 for the max rank. And it's going to take 210 to even develop it to rank 2. And then you also need 90 Pokemon in your box. So once you've caught 90 Pokemon, you're pretty much set on the Poke Pelago. But it just kind of shows that you still need to max it out. You still need to get a lot of Pokemon at the same time. And then the Poke Beans are non-stop. So that's going to be the max out for our Isle of View. And then we can also see with Isle Evolub. 75 Pokemon on the box, 225, 120, and 45 on the beans. And then I was able to just use every single bean to try to get my Isle of Fun up to rank 3. So you can get a lot of just expansion right there, and that's why you have to min-max those beans super hard. So Isle Evola, it's interesting. At rank 3, you gain 4 EVs in a stat every 30 minutes, so it takes 31 and a half hours to fully EV train a stat. Now, Poke Beans will recut this time by half by making it 15 minutes per play session. So that is also something to consider, which means you can fully EV train one stat for one Pokemon in about 15 hours or so if you are just kind of working on this and making sure they're going through their training and stuff. So that could be something. Also, you get some level boosting as well. So you get a nice little bit of experience if you want to AFK that. And this is actually something you have to be pretty careful of, because if you have the wrong Pokemon gaining the wrong EVs, well then now you're just kind of screwing up your training and everything like that. So this might be used for more specific IVs, or at least getting a head start or on some EV training. That if you know you're going to be just group training a batch of attack Pokemon, or if you want to get some specifics in hit points or defenses, then that means you can do it like that. That 10 training sessions is going to be 40 EVs and hit points. So depending on how your math is going from there, you might want to balance it out. Also, say you want like 120 EVs in something. So what you can do is use HP up. So you can HP up 10 times. That's going to give you 100 EVs. Then you can put them in the regiment for five cycles. And then you should have 120 hit point EVs if you're looking for like really specific stuff right there. So this one's going to be really interesting. I feel that regular EV training is faster and that this is a little too intense like you have to put a lot of focus on this this isn't really afk as much as the other ones and also isle of view is used for hatching eggs and then it will also be used for increasing friendship now i didn't put this in my friendship guide mostly because i didn't realize that it kind of worked it's also kind of a hassle but if you do just want to get some friendship up on some pokemon you just drop them in there afk but make sure you pull them out of the hot springs within 24 hours your pokemon has been in for over 24 hours and the happiness starts dropping because of that so the pokemon can get super relaxed and then have a lot of fun right there and that is going to be through high unlock methods or you could just afk and hatch some eggs so really the min max for 
the whole Pokepelago is just going to be out of optimizing timings and stuff. I think that the Isle of Fun is going to be the best one because this is good money making. Like, Path for Rare Treasure Hunting, yo, these things are worth money. Like, the big pearls, the pearl strings, the rare bones, the nuggets and big nuggets. Even if you're not getting gold bottle caps, you're still going to be making a good amount of money every 12 hours. And if you're, like, doing some other ways of grinding money, this is absolutely necessary. That... It doesn't cost anything that I can just go over, get some beans, and then I can go pu put them in, put a Pokemon on an adventure, and then the beans will be able to cause a huge amount of just money gain right there. Also, I think the berries could be worth it. Uh, depending on how many berries you want, it might be worth going to rank 2 or 3. But as long as you're just AF carrying a couple berries, maybe put in a couple beans as well, that could work out. And then, just your main isle, the Isle of Beans. It doesn't really matter if you're getting new Pokemon from this. It just matters that you're always coming in every day, tapping the beanstalk, getting as many beans as possible, and then snowballing the rest of it. Now, so some other things that you can do are develop isles, exchange Poke Beans, and the exchange is going to be interesting, that all of your Crystal Beans will be worth three regular beans each, and then the Rainbow Beans are a bit interesting, that they're worth seven each because they are fairly valuable, and if you get a lot of Rainbow Beans, it can help develop your islands, but you can use them for raising the, a Pokemon's affection in Pokemon Ami, or the Pokemon Refresh, whatever, Poke Refresh. That if you want to use the beans to gain affection, you can do that, or if you want to exchange them, you can do that as well. I'm not a huge Poke Refresh guy, so I'm going to get all the beans that I can. Then you can also send out a bean bottle. I've already done that for the day. So you send out a bean bottle, maybe you get one in return, help out people over the internet or something like that. And then the develop aisles. So as you can see, I have caught 72 Pokemon, don't have enough to start the Isle of View, and I'm still a couple of beans short because I just keep putting all of my beans into the rare treasure hunting. So there's a lot of just interesting little parts here, a lot of that min-maxing going on, and then as long as you're just developing and keeping on top of everything, you should be good to go. So that's kind of it for the guide right there. As I said and keep saying min-maxing, guys, that if you want to get the most optimal money, if you want to get the most optimal egg hatching and the most optimal berry farming and all kinds of crazy stuff like that, this is pretty much how you do it. But also, there's another interesting thing. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you're not at the end of the game just yet, I'll give you a couple of seconds to click off this video because that's pretty much it for the guide. But that is not the end of the secrets for the Pokepelago because you look at Moan. And you're wondering, like, yo, what's up with Moan? He kind of looks like Lily. He kind of looks like Gladion. That we've seen that Lusamine, that, that, are, that they are all related. And they still have, like, the lockish blonde hair and those green eyes. And that kind of showed that they were family as well. Well, Moan, that's actually someone that we learn about throughout the storyline. So depending on how much you're paying attention to the Aether Foundation, depending on how much you're going through, like, the stories, through the wormholes and stuff like that, we can see that Moan is actually the father of... Lily and Gladian, and then like tore that family apart by being sucked into a wormhole and it seems like he's taking it pretty well So it is revealed later by Gladian that he was a professor at the Aether Foundation and was the one who named Cosmog He wrote research papers on Ultra Beasts and Ultra Wormholes one day He disappeared through a wormhole which caused his wife Lusamine to grow insane and then desperately try to find him Which is why she is so interested in Ultra Beasts and Ultra Wormholes. So yep the dad kind of vanished while doing some research. Lusamine went insane. That insane, that insanity just drove her into madness. That caused her to hate her children. Then the children rebel rebelled. And then what does Moan have to say for it? He seems to be doing pretty well for himself. He's taking this island life really well. He's got that straw hat. He built himself a nice little hut. He's tending to Pokemon and having fun all day. So he went full beach bum and then accidentally tore the family apart. So... I don't think it's like, it's not like a crazy conspiracy or it's not like a crazy thing that once you see the name Moan and then you see the name Moan right here, it's, it's pretty much a given right there. And then you could also see the similarities of these guys. So he went full dad mode right there. And also, I'm wondering if this is going to have something to do with the sequel version or whatever is going to be coming up. That if there's, you know, Pokemon Eclipse or whatever people are going to be calling it. Now what if when you go to the Pokebellago, you get another voice line from Moan after you beat the story or someone? It's like, man, I miss my family. And then you talk to Gladian and it's like, oh, I, I know where your dad is because I, I found out that Moan's just... This guy and you were mentioning a guy named Moan and you should see what's happening. Then it's like, father, and then everything goes all all crazy again. So maybe the the sequel won't be playing won't be doing the storyline the same way. Maybe it'll just take off from where we left off right now. That we get to find out more about different Pokemon or something like that. Then maybe Moan is the secret to more Pokemon in the seventh generation or more expanded, like Pokemon Sun and Moon version. Things might get interesting right there. But it is a plot hole that we know about, but it really isn't fixed for like no reason. Just say like Hey, Gladian, let's take a trip over to the Pokepelago for some reason. Just 
you know, maybe some seeing some happy Pokemon will do some good for you. It's like, Dad, oh, hey, what a surprise. You know, something like that. I don't know, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.